Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. Today, we're going to explore rosemary essential oil. Liz, are you excited about rosemary? Not at all. Nope. No, this oil fills me with dread and hatred. Not excited about this at all. <laughs> well, I think it's a really magical oil. So, first of all, why do you not like it? Um, I think because, well, actually, energetically, I don't like it. It's too bossy. It's like mm-hmm. having two alphas in the room. Rosebury and I are both too strong for each other. But also, the common wisdom we through from like authorities in the field is different and conflicting to what I was trained in. And what I trained in feels right for me. So because it's completely different, and we'll talk about that as we go, I'm just like, nope, don't like it. Don't like it. I'm sticking away from it. So I try very hard never to use rosemary if I can help it. Yeah, interesting. And, and I'm intrigued to find out, you know, the and that can be a challenge when it comes to just learning about essential oils in general, kind of, is there is so much conflicting information out there. Um, the names of the essential oils can vary. Sometimes two different oils are named the same thing. Um, and, you know, where a plant grows, we'll, we've talked about that in previous episodes, where a plant grows will alter its chemistry, which will alter its effect. And so, you know, things like, Lavender is not the same everywhere. And I know Australian lavender is very different from European lavender um, because of different constituents in it. So it can be a bit of a minefield and, you know, you can end up going down a bit of a rabbit hole, can't you? Yeah, and I, I think it's very nature. Is it's a, it is a chameleon. So, um, yeah, you said about different names. What's the Latin name of rosemary? Oh. Is it Rosemary Officialis? No, it's not, is it? Well, so, I, uh, Ro- Rosemarinus Officialis is yeah. what most people put on the labels, but actually, no, it's not. Um, okay. is that, so about three years ago, my, my COVID might be changing my perception of time, but I think about three years ago, the whole plant was moved into the sage family. The family. So wow. when they'd done a uh, chemical analysis and to, to understand the chemotype, they were like, oh, so this isn't, this isn't like a, a group, a family on its own. This is a sage. So actually, its Latin name changed to Salvia Rosmarinaris. It is a sage. Mm. Um, we only just knew that. So already we're starting to think, okay, everything that you learn about this, as soon as you get your foothold, it goes, no, nah, it's something else. <laughs> and that is the feeling that I get about it all of the time. Um, and, yeah, you, you, there are lots of different chemotypes of it. So, for example, um, there's like a one that's very high in camphor. There's another one that's very high in verbenone. And they have completely different uh, properties. And don't ask me to go down uh, explaining too much what they are, because I just go, don't need to know that. And <laughs> Not going to use it anyway, <laughs> but they are very different. Um, and it is, um, it can be very high in ketones. So ketones can be a, a problematic group too. So, for example, um, they can be harmful for people ha- who have seizures, for example. Um, and one of the contraindications that I was taught when I trained was that this is a no-no oil for um, anyone who has epilepsy. But when I did the Beyond the Essential Oil Recipe Summit in 2018, I was talking to uh, Scylla shepherd Hyam, and she's probably one of the most knowledgeable people about contraindications of oils there is in the world. Any kind of, um, or has ever been actually, any kind of, problems where somebody's had an accident or um, reports a, 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 an accident or a hazard, it goes to Scylla. So this is not somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. And she says, yeah, but I've used it really successfully on p- treating people with epilepsy. I'm like, wait, what? Not only would I have thought of doing that, I would have definitely stayed away from it because I was taught that's a contraindication. Um, and 
And it's made more difficult, of course, by something that's not even to do with the essential oil. There's so many different types of epilepsy. So does it help one kind of epilepsy? Does it, uh, or is there like a contraindication against one kind of epilepsy? I, I don't know. And I don't think that's been explored and I don't want to explore it. So don't anybody <laughs> ask me to. <laughs> Likewise, um, a similar thing happened. I was always trained that you... Don't use it for somebody who has high blood pressure. And incidentally, if you read anything that I write, I still write these contraindications. Don't use it with people with epilepsy. Don't use it with people who've got high blood pressure. Even though I've been told by people who are very experienced in their field, no, I don't agree with that. So in terms of um, high blood pressure, Robert Tisserand wrote a post, I don't know, how long ago? Maybe eight years ago, something like that, who said... The problem with learning about uh, essential oils from herbal books, which the early the people who trained early on, i.e. me, did, was that not all constituents pass through distillation, so they're not the same as the herb. So that is correct. That is an absolutely wise statement. And then he said, yeah, but so therefore, um, rosemary is not necessarily uh, bad for people who have high blood pressure. And if you read Jennifer Petrine, she will say uh, it's got an anti-hypotensive effect. So there are, and you know, it brings down hypertension. But then also two clinical trials, one done in 2001, one done in 2013, specifically said that it raises systolic blood pressure. Because it's stimulating, it it pushes up your blood, uh, your pulse. So I don't know how all things can be true, but they mm. seem to be all true. I don't know. Maybe in the same way that the Sicilians say that fairies sleep in rosemary flowers. How can all of those things be true? And yet they do seem to be true, according to whoever you speak to. So it is something that I really struggle with. And then finally, because of the high levels of ketones in some of the chemotypes, another reason to avoid oils with uh, ketones is that they have a like a delusory uh, effect because ketones, um, Malti Jose, uh, Hosel describes it the best. He's the guy that owns Oshadi. He calls ketones the disincarnators. In other words, they make you leave your body. So oils that are high in ketones can make you feel like you're having an out-of-body experience. So things like hyssop, for example. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on this, the good reasons to use hyssop in a minute. Uh, sorry, use ketones in a bit. But um, bad reasons are this idea of leaving your body. So one of the key contraindications of somebody for somebody... Um, using ketones is if somebody has some kind of psychosis or has tendencies towards has schizophrenia or delusory, uh, any kind of delusory illness, then, yeah, you don't want to be touching anything with, with ketones in it. So whilst it's not necessarily a specific contraindication of that oil, it is. <laughs> you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of reason to stay away from it. And uh, without, without going into too much detail, there are those kind of illnesses in my family, so therefore I just stay away from it. Mm. Um, so reasons that I do use it on other people if if pushed, I think there is no better oil for something like nerve pain. Um, so it has an antinociceptic effect. So things like sciatica, there is no better oil than, than, um, than rosemary. Massage is contraindicated if you have sciatica. Um, so just smoothing in rosemary is really, really helpful. But all kinds of pain. Um, if you think about the chemical makeup of the oil, so it's high in limonene, which has lots of chemical uh, scientific evidence as an analgesic. High in 1,8-cineol, also loads of analgesic properties. Camphor, and camphor seems to be the main one that does the work in rosemary, analgesic. Um, so 
tremendous, tremendous skills as a painkiller. If if you haven't got any of the other things, if that makes sense. Likewise, a digestive, absolutely fantastic digestive agent is a very good reason why we in England, presumably in France, I definitely think, whether you do it overseas. But if you eat lamb, we always shove pieces of rosemary into the skin because it breaks down the fat. Um, and in the body, it breaks down lipids. So it's extremely good for um, for digestion, but also breaking down cholesterol. Um, so it's a really clever, helpful oil. And we haven't even touched on the mental side or the emotional side yet. Um, but yeah, like you say, if, if there's a, a situ if it was an oil that I would say, just keep it away from me, this is the one. Mm. So obviously on our podcast and our podcast, our aim is to give people insights and education. We may have left a few people kind of a bit like, oh, do I use this or do it? Do I not? You know, I had a, a, one of my customers come to me and say, um, I love rosemary. I use it pretty much every day. And I've just read that epileptics shouldn't use it. What should I do? Um, should I stop using it? And he hadn't had a seizure in two years. So, you know, this could then be it's a case. Not, then it's not affecting him, is it? Yeah. So I guess like, just like when we go to a doctor, they normally prescribe something and say, give this a shot for two to three weeks. If it doesn't work, come back and we'll try something different. We've got to understand that essential oils and all plants are going to have different impacts on us. But definitely, I think, maybe a strong point we need to make is proceed with caution if you've got things like epilepsy or high blood pressure. Yeah, yeah, and uh, any kind of psychosis um, yes. condition. In fact, those kind of psychotic ones are probably the the main reason to use it because uh, to, to avoid it because in those kind of situations, your brain may not tell you the truth. Mm, yes, very and true. And you may not be perceiving reality as it is. So a bit like... And it's a completely different plant. But does marijuana cause schizophrenia? Well, the, the, there is definitely a, a big parity between people who have schizophrenia and people who smoke marijuana. And two things. So does one cause the other? No, I don't think it does. And that's that's my opinion. No, I don't think it does. But first of all, because it plays on this kind of delusory affection, because it makes you paranoid, for example, there are a lot of people who self-medicate with it. Uh, mm. And the, par the paranoia kind of feeds into that of going, you need more, you need more. So there's a self-medication thing that's going on, but a bit like with opioids tricking you, you're more in pain than you are. Um, but also, we do know that marijuana will and I, I don't I shouldn't say that word should I because that's quite a racist term isn't it but but psychoactive uh, cannabis as opposed to CBD can cannabis and hemp marijuana um, will trigger latent schizophrenia so you may not have had schizophrenia but you may have a genetic disposition towards it and it will switch it on interesting and so and so this kind of, this idea of a, a little knowledge is dangerous, but actually sometimes a lot of knowledge is even more problematic. Look at the knots I've tied myself up into with it. Very um, much so. And, and I, think the answer, I think the answer is the most simple answer. If it feels right, then go with it. If it doesn't feel right, put the top back on and go, no, there's other oils that have got similar properties. And that's the great thing about the essential oil world is that there are always an alternative for pretty much everything, isn't there? Yeah, 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 definitely. Now, one thing we haven't touched on yet, but I know Rosemary is revered greatly for it and is very, very popular, is for, I kind of think, if, and you'll kind of see a bit of a theme as I'm talking today, you may match it in what Liz was saying as well, but I find Rosemary is good for everything to do with the head. And one of the things is hair growth. Adding it to shampoo and conditioner, a lot of people find great benefits from using rosemary just a couple of drops in with your shampoo and conditioner and rubbing that in thickness health hair loss all those different things have found it really really uh, helpful 
Can I agree and disagree? I think it's going to be one of those episodes, isn't it? It is. So uh, the properties are absolutely correct. There's lots of medical evidence that shows that particularly for um, alopecia, very, very helpful oil. However, if you are putting it in the shampoo and washing it off, it's got no chance to do its work. Got you. Yeah. So more so, of like a hair mask, you'd say, put it in a carrier oil and leave it in? Exactly right. And massage. Yeah. So, so when you look at the clinical trials, there is lots of supporting evidence, but there has always been head massage involved in it too because you're stimulating the hair follicle, uh, follicles. So there is a danger of overselling the properties of the oil. If you put it into a shampoo, it's going to do no good at all because you're just going to wash it off straight away. Conditioner, if you leave it on, yes, but the but uh, head massage is better. And you could improve on that with uh, adding cedarwood that also has similar um, su supporting evidence and also spikenard. Um, if you were really in a state, because you know my feelings about that being quite a sacred oil, but there is um, traditional medicine says it makes your hair thicker and blacker because, of course, it's an Indian uh, a treatment. But, um, yeah, that too. Yeah. Another thing it's also associated with, and I think that's another key theme of rosemary, is remembrance. It's said to be a really great oil for study. And I've found um, a bit of a technique. You can make a blend or you can just use pure rosemary, is this idea of kind of creating like an aromatic anchor that when you're studying, you diffuse it, you're inhaling it, and then when you're, um, you know, when you finish that study, you get rid of that aroma. Now, when you need to recall that information, whether you're giving a presentation or an exam or something like that, bringing rosemary back helps with not only mental function, but just like we smell things and go back to other memories of, you know, a, a place we've been, a, a, an old family member, a an ex-lover, it'll help in that way as well. So you can kind of use it in multiple ways and people have found that quite effective. Yep, I agree with that too. And, but I can hone it a tad more for you. Please, so, dive in. If you look at, if you look at brain scans, uh, when somebody's inhaling um, rosemary, what you'll see is an increase in alpha and beta waves, which are uh, basically, I am really concentrated and I'm engaged, alpha. Uh, and beta is like, I am listening, but I'm quite relaxed. So that's good. That's an ideal situation, for example, for an exam. I am mm. listening, I'm concentrating, but I'm relaxed. What's more, they have proven that the brain is stimulated and engaged. And also that when you inhale um, rosemary oil, mathematical processing is quicker. So we recall information, but there is a codicil and a warning. The war the warning is this: that you recall you process information quicker, but not as accurately. Hmm. So there is an oil that I can say that will uh, mediate that. Also, very good for recalling math, uh, like doing mathematical calculations, but also increases accuracy. Both Melissa and um, Betty Bear. So the Betty Bear in particular is very good from the point of view that you go into that uh, um, hall, that that sports hall or whatever to do your uh, exam, and you are chill and you are mm. grounded. And so, yeah, just blending in the uh, just enough rosemary so that your brain is like that. And yep. that you recall information because it is really good for, for, for recalling information. But but uh, Betty Vare says, yeah, just keep your concentration level and you'll be able to remember things more accurately. Interesting. Now, one of the uh, other aspects of it, when it comes to mythology, it's said to be, an, and it's been interesting listening to you talk about different things um, and talking about being very alpha and very you know dominant and that type of thing. It is a herb that's quite sacred to Zeus. And I find that quite interesting in a way that, you know, um, it, it does have that Zeus-like energy about it. And, you know, those, um, even that you're talking about psychosis, you know, sometimes that Zeus energy of being almost delusional with your grandness kind of thing is, it kind of does tie in with its energy, doesn't it? It does. But going back to how can both things be true, 
it's also sacred to Virgin Mary and supposed to be a manifestation of the Virgin Mary. Zeus, mm. Virgin Mary, <laughs> so different, aren't they? Yeah, well, I, I could I, I could go off on another tangent here. I'm actually um, doing some extra study in astrology at the moment, and we were studying um, Hecate last night um, and looking at possible links of how um, there's links between Hecate and the Vir or, or Mother Mary. Um, yes. And, yeah, uh, not so much the Virgin Mary, but more the Mother Mary. And um, the, you know, Rosemary is very much about remembrance, and we'll, we'll go down that path a little bit more as well, and that, that knowingness is kind of an energy of it. So maybe there's a tie in there. Maybe. So I I quite I quite like the Hecate because she's a triple Hecate association, I should say. Yeah. Because she is a triple goddess, so she's maiden mother and crone or all, all in three. But the idea that she is goddess of boundaries when I talked about delusion and where the boundaries slip away, that is a very Hecate thing. But also She's the goddess of crossroads. And so this idea of being able to make decisions, like we were talking about with mathematical processing, that seems correct to me. Yeah, interesting. And I guess she is, you know, it, it is said that she's she's seen everything that happens on the earth, will happen on the earth, is happening on the earth, and that type of thing. She's that all-knowing. So it's very much that that knowledge base again and, and remembering, knowing, function, and that mental function, isn't it? Yep, keeper of the keys. She's Clyde, Clyde Ducos, keeper of the keys. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go sticking with this remembrance tone um, or theme. I'm gonna go off on a little story um, that I quite like. And the, the lead character, it's normally Archangel Gabriel, but I have heard other versions of it as well. But it's believed that when we're in our mother's belly, we actually Archangel Gabriel comes to us and tells us exactly what we're meant to do on this planet in this incarnation. And then just before we're born, he touches us under the, our nose, we forget, and we're born. And then we spend our whole blooming lives trying to work out what we're meant to be doing. Sweet. So I, I know, exactly. Yes. And, and, you know, we, we're reading books, we're listening to podcasts, we're asking other people, what do you think the meaning of life is? What's my meaning of life? What am I meant to be doing? And all that type of thing. And the answer is it's right under our nose. Oh, we know. I love and we that. listen to ourselves. And so the idea of rosemary not only helps us to remember facts and figures and different things like that, but I find it a really great one for the crown chakra. It's almost got like the crown chakra flowers in it. In helping us, you know, we use it in funeral rites as well as remembering those of the past. So remember it. I find rosemary really great in meditation to help us go, well, what am I meant to be doing? To find those answers and to go within. And even in astrology, if we link back to Hecate, Hecate, um, when she goes, her asteroid goes into retrograde, we often doubt our ability to find answers, to find our way forward, to to know what to do at those crossroads. So Rosemary is a really great one to sit with at remembering what am I meant to be doing, how do I do it, and what are the correct answers. That's very interesting. I cannot comment because I've not sat long enough with her. That's very interesting. Mm. Um I had to flick across my brain then of something I wanted to say, and it's completely gone, really. Um, no, I just really wanted to talk about how it stimulates the mind, really. Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. That's gone. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> should, should have sniffed something. <laughs> uh, it helps cognition. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Uh, it, it helps cognition. So for somebody who has dementia, I'm back in the weave. I know where I am. Uh, and also say to be bees after. Uh, so if somebody is not lucid in a care home uh, and they're not really tapping into, they don't know who's coming and going and they're having these horrible, like, oh, is it such and such? And then the family are saying, oh, no, he's, he's dead, love. You know, that that horrible thing. That, that is really uh, the, the worst. I, I just hope that never happens to anybody close to me. It just is awful. But then you also have this strange thing where, if you play some music and a song, the probably chances are that all the words are there. Um, and 
Rosemary's very good at kind of being able to, they're not going to bring back the broken synapses, no, no matter what anybody says. You know, those synapses have gone, that station's closed, that train can't come through. But being able to kind of just keep them lucid a little longer sometimes can be, Rosemary can be helpful for that. Um, and so in the same way, Lavender and Melissa are, are very good for helping to calm them down. So in my Melissa book, one of the hardest things to write, and everything about that book was hard to write, but one of the hardest was about dementia, about Alzheimer's. And there's so much research into Melissa for, for it because it's so helpful and they want to understand it as well as they can. So what they did was created these um, or worked uh, alongside these questionnaires that are not necessarily about the patient as such. They're about the carer and their life experience. So how many times does person spit at you how many times do they pull your hair how many times did they disrobe in public how many times do they wander off and it's just like oh my god that existence must be horrific mm. so using melissa and lavender as a hand massage is really proven to be able to calm that down so that they are less agitated uh, less confused but Rosemary is very good for kind of keeping them a li little more lucid. But go, harping back to right at what I said at the beginning, know the person that you are dealing with. If there are any of those other situations, don't play. Don't play if they've got uh, got epilepsy. Certainly don't if they're getting, like, if there's delusion. You know, if they are confused and they're making things up rather than they're forgetting, if that makes sense, then yeah, we don't. Yeah. But, but... It, you know, for somebody who's maybe doing classes where you bring in the piano and everybody sings, a burner with it in, it's just lovely because they will really click into the words and, you know, be able to just come back again in that bit. Yeah, beautiful. Um, again, going off on a slightly different tangent, Rosemary, there was a saying that every good witch has Rosemary in front of her home. It's got that reputation as well for being very protective. Um, growing a bush near the letterbox is said to be good. And there's you know different traditions in different um, areas where it's nature too, where it's warding off evil spirits and, and bad luck and curses and all that type of thing as well, um, which kind of interested me when you were talking about, I was toying in my mind prior to us um, jumping on today, of is it more cleansing or is it protective, if that it's makes sense? It, yes. It is and a, it's the, a de detoxifying plant yeah well the fact that you've now put it in with you know we often know a sage to be that's definitely a cleansing yes. plant um, yes. it's quite interesting that if it's moving into that family then okay it's protective because it cleanses rather than being like a a wall or a barrier and warding off danger as danger comes it it cleanses it away type of thing Would yeah, you agree so with that? yeah 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 well, kind of so um what I didn't talk about was it has hepato uh, um, protective um, skills. So we take we we eat it as a digestive, but it will also protect the liver, and of course the liver detoxifies the body. But I mean, yes, you're talking about how it's a witch thing. But if you look at the Bible, if you look at the the Torah, if you look, I um, I think at the uh, the Quran, I can't think of a specific example but i'm guessing it would be true it's it's used to cleanse the space of the of the um sacrifice and the worship space so actually i mean we've got a, a castle in um in ludlow and i used to go and help taking to take the kids from the infant school up to the castle on the trips and it's all obviously stone floor and I always used to say all this would have been covered in herbs and as you walked on it, then that would purify the space and make it smell better and you wouldn't be able to smell the, the, the way because no toilets and all of that. It, it Because it's such a strongly smelling uh, plant and also because it's a, it's a fumigatory plant. So if you burn it like sage, like sage, you will have a lot of smoke, scented smoke, white smoke. So that's got like religious connotations. It's a pure smoke. 
so yeah it's it's, it's a cleansing uh, thing but also in terms of what I talked about earlier with with Virgin Mary that association comes from a, a an old myth where they said that she was washing her clothes by the in the river and she threw her uh, mantle over the uh, plant for it to dry and it turned all the flowers blue so you have this ah. it, so it, it uh, translates this information of uh, you know uh, Mother Mary protect me, Mother Mary save me. So yes, that's a witch thing, but it's also a, a, like a, a, a Catholic thing to do with the saints as well. Would you? So there are we we know there's a few different cleansing um, plants around the world. You know we've talked about Palo Santo. We've obviously talked about sage before on the different variety of that in Australia. Eucalyptus is that absolutely amazing. From your just your your own humble opinion, when would you, if you're looking at all your essential oils and you're like, right, I need to clean the space, when would you go for rosemary as opposed to one of the others, do you think? I never would. Wrong question. Then, of course. Okay. When would you Wrong recommend question. I do it then? Um, <laughs> or someone else? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't have that database of information in my body because I don't use it. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, like I've really been uh, differentiating between clary sage and Spanish sage recent, recently. And after our discussion and just what I know about clary sage, I find that's a really good one around that full moon and that emotional kind of cleanser, whereas the Spanish sage is a bit more for that mental. Like I find if I'm mentally overwhelmed, that really helps to kind of get rid of the cobwebs or, or if you've been around someone who's kind of like been jamming your brain. That can be really great, and maybe rosemary might fit a little bit more in that mental realm. If you kind of like, there's a lot oh, of heavy it does, mental. Yeah, realm. it definitely exists within the mental realm. It's not an emotional. It's no, not, it doesn't belong to the emotional realm. It does belong to the mental faculties. Yes, it does. Very much so. Yeah, chakra wise, what would you associate it with? The third eye. Yep. Yeah. I, I pop it up. So on the I crown. would use it. I can see how. Yeah, I can see how that you you would go there. But remember how it helps concentration. It helps. So um, the the best preparation for headaches, lavender, basil, rosemary, can't be beat. Also mm. good for um, for good for migraines because it's a nerve pain. All of those are here. Memories here. So yeah, that. Yeah, got to. And, and, and planetary wise, um, Mercury. Because of the way, actually, no, I'm going to say for me, it's Neptunian, the way that it's, it's like the, like the chameleon, how it changes, how it's like vapid and nebulous, everything's nebulous around it, but it's mercurial really, isn't it? Because it's blue, but, but for me, it's, it's Neptunian. I, I know we actually attribute it to more that Jupiter because of that, that Zeus connection and it, it's. It's grandeur and yeah, maybe that remembrance, that expansion. How, yeah, it's. I can, I can definitely work, see how Jupiter works. works. Ju yeah, Jupiter works because because of the liver and digestion as well. Yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I hope we brought some some at least some thoughts to people um, after talking a little bit about rosemary, and I hope maybe some insight and not too much confusion. So yeah, so I think today we'll say sorry, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess the you know I the, the two summaries I would make first of all feel free to use rosemary but proceed with caution if you have any type of epilepsy any kind of delusionary um, issues or high blood pressure those are kind of the three main contraindications I picked up from today would you agree with that yeah well uh, those are my three main ind contraindications circling back not everybody's but yeah. but I would but I would say if you have got high blood pressure watch it watch it with your blood pressure monitor that that to me that would be the most interesting thing to do yeah. also take your pulse and see what happens with your pulse you know uh, you can take you can there's an app on even on google fit where you can just put your thumb on the uh, on the camera and it takes your pulse watch mm. it see what, see what yeah. it does you know uh, learn to experiment make your own decisions very much so. Anything else we need to share about Rosemary, you think? Or are you, or are you ready to jump on to next week's episode already because so we don't have to talk about Rosemary anymore? Uh, well, I think I better, I think I better clarify that, it, that it's not a hazardous, hazardous oil. It's only me mis like being overly cautious with it. 
So maximum dilution is uh, 3%, so it's high. Um, it's safe on children, you know, providing that you use it intelligently. There is uh, one eight on the which slows respiration, but it's, it's low levels. It's not like you've got to worry about it like you do with like peppermint or eucalyptus. I would say don't use it at night. If you are going to use it, use it in the morning because it's awakening, it's stimulating. You don't want to have that happening at night. So if you're studying in an evening, don't use it in an evening and then expect to go to sleep. That's not going to happen. So that's a that's a vetiver time to um, to study or a mm. Melissa time to study. Um, but yeah, just it's it's some it's a way to learn about yourself actually to to experiment with that oil of like just sniffing it. How does it make me feel? Do I feel in a safe space? Do I not feel in a safe space? If you don't feel in a safe space, go. Would you like my bottle? I'm not going to use it again. <laughs> well, please let us know in the comments how you feel about rosemary. What um you know what benefits or you know why you don't like it as well. Um and of course if you've got questions about rosemary now because I think we've unearthed a few possible questions for people. Book in for our, uh, our masterclass. It's happening later this month. Um, the discount code is down there as well because we want to honour you for being a loyal listener. Um, and that is your chance to ask myself, Liz, um, questions about rosemary or any other oil, and we'll dive into that deeper in the masterclass as well. But we'll be back next week when we dive into an amazing another gift from Mother Earth and the Plant Kingdom. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.